what other questions or what questions about that have come up for you that you wish you'd ask? What else do you want to know on those topics? About getting in front of the room and making presentations. Yes, please. So uh, you said that a, a tool that you use about verbal stuff is um, stories like anecdotes. Mm -hmm. How long do you think an anecdote should be? It's, it's, it's well, how long is a piece of string? It just depends on how complex the point you want to make. Mm -hmm. Of course, my favorite analogy is the one I use with it information sandwich is that when you're preparing, if you imagine the slices of bread, the meat, that's the body of presentation, it's the meat of the presentation. When you think about that first, before you think about slides and opening and closing, that's when it works. Stories are great. Stories, people remember stories more than they'll remember data and facts and processes and structures. They remember stories. I mean, all, all your great religious leaders, you know, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, they all told stories to make the point. So I think they're great, but how long do they need to be? Uh, I would say make them as concise as you can. Probably two minutes is a good story. You tell, you take about a minute and a half to build up, you set the stage, and there's a similar structure to it, by the way. So if you like, I can show you the structure for a story. Do you want to see the structure for a story? Sure. Okay, let me get a marker. Okay, every story, every fairy story, just about every movie has the same, has the same process. The first step is to set the stage. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a beautiful princess. You get the idea? So it always starts there. And the princess was betrothed to the handsome prince from the kingdom next door. But she had a wicked stepmother that was jealous, and since the princess was a little bit of a princess, she would upset the stepmother. And the stepmother gave her a poisoned apple, put her in a coma. There you go. So what comes next from setting the stage is the challenge. Because with the challenge, the prince now has to figure, okay, my girlfriend's in a coma, what am I going to do? So they consult the why I'm making this up as I go along, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> blame, blame me for this one. All right, the challenge then is what does the prince do to recover his princess? So this is like the Sleeping Beauty story. So she's in a glass box, she's locked up in a thing, and he has to go through all sorts of adventures to solve this challenge, to rise to the challenge and go through the quest. And the quest is fighting the black neck, slaying the dragon, working their way through the swamp climbing the mountain, going through snow, whatever, to get to the princess to resolve the issue, right? So what's the, the, uh, the triumph, if you like? Okay, so this is the triumph. Step four is the resolve of the issue. You know, and the triumph is, and they all lived happily ever after. But is that the end of the story? No. No, what's the last step in the story? you got to tie it back to what you're talking about. Yeah, so, and what we say, so the moral of the story is, in other words, right, the moral is, don't upset your stepmom. 50% of marriages in America end in divorce. So half the population here have step parents. <laughs> now, of course, the other half of marriages in America end in death. So, you know, you've got a choice where you are. It gets worse. <laughs> All right, so for the engineers in the room, so this is the fairy story version. For the engineers in the room, help, help me set this up. So here's the situation. All right, challenge, there's the problem. This is getting easier now. What's happening here is the process. Right, and then the solution. Solution. And the learning point. So we don't make the same mistake twice. That was I, you like that better? That was easier to tell. So one, two, three, four, five steps again. So what have we been covering here? Opening, <laughs> agenda point one, two, three, close. So you glad you asked? So that's how you tell a story. It's the same structure as a presentation. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Make sure 
that you leave with the engineers is the learning point of what's going to happen next and with the theory story it's the moral of the story what do we learn from this so the purpose of your story has to have a purpose it has to have a learning point and that's the process you get to leave that off of you is that useful? Yeah. I enjoyed that, thanks for the challenge mm -hmm. blow it like that's what they call tap dancing in the world of training where you go totally off script and you're tap dancing your way through the process my assigned topic is step number seven in the development process <coughs> and as you recall steps one through six, one through five is a presentation plan step six is the addition of visual aids and that's where most people stop now for you that's step number six for most people that's step number one and there is no step two build a slide deck you have a presentation but you're the advanced group now and to be even more advanced most people think when we'll have a slide ready we're ready to present but there's another step for you and that is to close the loop and go right back to the start of the process and think about the audience right the first step think about the audience who's in the audience what do they need to know and from there you've determined your objectives and your agenda and how long it's going to take. Now step seven considers, okay, now I know what I'm going to present. Who's going to have a problem with it? Where might the challenges come from? So for some, they might not like the idea. It might cause some change for them. It might be disruptive. For others, it might it looks like it's going to cost money. For others, maybe they don't understand it. Now there are four fundamental challenges you could face. One is disinterest, the other is doubt or skepticism, the third is misunderstandings, and the fourth is dislike. So that's the kind of challenges you have to anticipate. Who in the audience might not be very interested in the topic, but they have to be there because they're part of a team? Other people might doubt your data and stats. Remember we talked about the appendix, having more information to present, but you don't want to bore everybody with all that data. You just use it when you need it. And misunderstandings, you have to be careful that you don't correct somebody and make them wrong. <laughs> we know that, especially bosses. You don't want to point out that they're wrong. You might say, you know, given the data you have currently, I can understand your point of view. That's exactly where I was until we did this latest research, and here's the new information. So the focus is on the new information, not the fact that they're wrong. Now, if you're in a position where you know there's some people in that room that are not going to like where this is going because it's maybe not going to cost them work, you have to think and make a decision. Do you wait till that individual raises the challenge, or do you think, no, I'm going to build it into the presentation? So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, my proposal. So I'm making a presentation, and the objective is, is to cause some change. We're going to take on a new piece of software. Oh yeah, another version of SAP or something that everybody would just be thrilled to death with, wouldn't you? So here we go. <laughs> so that's the, the proposal I'm making then, is to cause a change, adopt some new software. But I know that Lauren's not going to like the idea because it's going to mean a lot of disruption for her team, for the accountants. They're going to have to do a lot of work changing everything in the process. So what I might do is this. Say, well, so my objective is to convince you all to take on and make the change to the new software. And there's loads of benefits that I intend to present to you. And there's one big concern. Because if I was sitting in Lauren's chair right now, I would not be too happy about the idea of yet another change to the software systems we're working with. And let's all acknowledge, if you go ahead with this, it will cause a lot of disruption and extra work for Lauren and her team. So Lauren, I thank you for being here. I appreciate your over 90s, and I've got my fingers crossed that the benefits I show you will outweigh the long-term benefits will outweigh the shorter-term disruption for you and your people. I think it would be important for everybody to be aware of that. So thanks for being here. You get the idea? So I'm not going to hide for it and I'm not going to leave Lauren in control to wait to shoot my wheels off <laughs> when I least expect it. I'll let you go back and that's step number seven. You go back and think about, oh yeah, how am I going to handle Lauren and her team? And then build it in. Does that help? So that's step number seven. There's no option but to apply seven and anticipate the challenges. Uh, your decision will be what we do to prepare for them. So for skepticism, have extra information. For misunderstandings, don't correct the person with the wrong information. Focus on the new information rather than you're wrong. This is new information, it's different. And of course, as you say, for dislikes, be prepared to help it. Right now, we've covered 
all the content of the program, unless you introduce another topic like stories, we've got that one then, right? <laughs> What's left for us to discuss, or what questions are still lingering for you before we take a short bio break and then launch into the final practice opportunity? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, um, have you ever given a presentation in which your presentation completely contradicted the viewpoint of everyone in the room? Or a few people in the room and how they reacted? Uh, well, okay, so the short, the sh hmm. so you're asking me about three parts of that question. So the first part of the question was, have I ever made a presentation that contradicted the points of view of everybody in the room? Yes. A lot of times I've been in a position to have to go in and sell change or sell products and services. And I have faced hostile audiences before. And what I do know is to focus on my benefits, take their questions, but maintain control. And how you maintain control is by determining the agenda, the objective, and the timing. Because if you don't do those things and you're one person that wants to keep leading it off on a tangent or arguing and arguing and asking another question and continuing challenging you, there comes a point where you have to say, you know, I'll be happy to continue answering your questions and do my best to respond to the challenges here. We've set aside 30 minutes for the meeting. There are four minutes left. If I continue down this process, we will go over time. I'm willing to do that. The question is, will the group? Now, this is especially useful if you've got one person and you just wish everybody would shut up. You just wish this guy would shut up. Right? So, I'm in not a position to do that, but what I can do is rope in the group to it. So, let's just say it's Victor. Right? I'll say, Victor, I understand the issues here and I don't know that we can resolve it in the time we have. Now, if the group wants to continue on with this, I'm happy to stick around. But if the group would rather break as planned here in about four minutes, and for you and I to handle this offline or reconvene for another meeting, we can do that. All right, so let's have a show of hands then. If you want to continue and extend the meeting into the lunch period, raise your hand. <laughs> and that's what happens, right? Because nobody else wants to do that. <laughs> and that's the manipulation. <laughs> the manipulation is you ask for the show of hands for what you don't want. Right? Now, generally speaking, what I'll always do is the first step when I'm presenting with challenges is acknowledge the point of view. You acknowledge the point of view, empathize with the point of view. Uh, everybody has a right to a point of view, and everybody has a right to express that point of view. And it's okay for us to acknowledge it. We don't have to agree. I don't mean agree with it, but acknowledge it. And that tends to defuse any kind of conflict. Am I answering your question? Okay. Did you have a specific situation in mind you were thinking of? No, I'm just wondering about like how yeah. should we deal with hostility. If you're well prepared, if you're well prepared, you're ready for it, and if hostility is coming your way, and I've had it loads of times when we're going to try to sell, sell training, there's probably somebody in the room with a pet trainer, not me, somebody else, come across it time and time again, and it'll be that person who would rather we were going with another company, because that's where his friends were, yeah, I'm in there trying to sell the group and I'm, I'm winning the argument that's when it gets spiky, and that's when I've had to say, we can keep down this route, right? But what I don't do, I want to keep justifying myself, justifying myself, justifying myself, because I know I'm never going to sell that guy. You know, it's like politics and religion, right? <laughs> it's a waste of time trying to convince somebody else to change their minds. It's not going to happen. Okay, tough one. Right. So what time is it? Two or nine. It's what? 209. 209. Let's break till 215. Just gather ourselves, get yourselves ready, and at 215 you're on your feet, and in turn we'll work our way through with presentation and feedback and questions. So thank you very much. You know, if you have questions, don't walk out of the room without getting them answered. I've probably got an answer if it comes to presentation. Okie dokie.